Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the different types of materials you could make a combat robot out of. So as I just said, today we're going to be talking about the different types of material options you have to choose from when building a combat robot. I'm by no means going to cover all of the material options because they're pretty much limitless. You could technically build a battle bot out of just about anything. But I am going to be talking about the more popular and my personal favorite materials. Everything I'm going to say today is intended for insect weight classes, but a lot of it can also be applied for heavier classes. Now, fair warning, this is just supposed to be an introduction to materials and not an in-depth look. So I'd highly encourage you guys to look into it more on your own. But with all that being said, without any further ado, let's get started. So first up, we have my personal favorite material that I've been working with since I was like 12 years old, which was in fact not last week, it was two weeks ago, and that material is Lexan. Lexan is a clear plastic that is nearly indestructible and can be purchased at almost any hardware store. It's 250 times stronger than glass, which for reference, plexiglass is only 10. Airplane windows, bulletproof glass, and a whole bunch of crazy other things are made out of Lexan because it's just so amazing. You can hit it with a hammer, bend it, drop it on the ground, insult it. You're so ugly and stupid, no one likes you, and mother doesn't like you. Do you think she likes you? Because she doesn't like you. And at best, the most you'll do is dent it. And that's where we hit it with the hammer. Hey, that's a good looking piece of Lexan. Oh, never mind. No, of course you can cut through Lexan, but it is somewhat resistant to it. So when it comes to battle bots, Lexan is a pretty logical and safe choice. But now how do you take a thin sheet of material like this and turn it into a battle bot frame? Well, there's primarily two different ways you could do it. The first way is bending. You could bend the piece of Lexan into a frame like I did on this one. You'll take a block of wood, square up the Lexan where you want it to be bent, then run a heat gun over it while bending it. You'll want to do this with gloves. You could also stick it into the oven to heat it up. It's really whatever you want to do. But once you're done, you'll be left with something kind of like this, minus the stickers. A benefit to this kind of frame is it's one salt piece of Lexan, so it's a lot harder to break, but a downside is it's hard to get precision work. Although I was extremely careful while making this and took my sweet time, you can see it still doesn't match up quite right. But maybe I just haven't perfected the technique yet. No, the second way you could turn a sheet of Lexan into a frame, which just so happens to be my favorite way, is you could cut out the individual pieces and then glue them together like I did on this one. As you can see, we have the sides, the bottom, and the top all glued together and holding well. Well, I say glued, but technically it's a weld. That's because I use Cygrip's acrylic solvent, which chemically welds the pieces together so it's closer to one solid piece. With that being said, though, you still need to be smart when building your frame and have as few exposed joints as possible. When I used this method, I had my outer frame built from the four pieces, then had my top and bottom put inside that to help reinforce it and make it more sturdy. And it actually worked really well. I had a lot of people telling me it wasn't going to hold and it was going to break on first impact, and that's just not what happened. I'll leave a link for the fight video down below so you can watch it for yourself, but a brief summary is the frame held up extremely well until the very end. It did end up breaking, but only after being hit by a couple different spinners countless times in a five minute fight. However, something I could have done to make the frame stronger was maybe use a box joint at the corners. That way they'll have a much larger gluing surface, or maybe bolt in a piece of plastic or metal at the corners. Or do both of them. The joints, the corner blocks, and the solvent all working together should make a pretty powerful bond. But what kind of material would make a good corner block? Well, I'm glad you asked because that brings us to our next plastic, HDPE. Not only would HDPE or high density polyethylene make for good corner supports, but also make for good frame all by itself. Like Lexan, HDPE can take a whole bunch of abuse without breaking, but unlike Lexan, it is very easy to cut into. Which, believe it or not, is actually a good thing because it makes it great at absorbing impacts. If you get dropped or drove into a wall, that's okay because it does have a certain amount of bend and flex to it. Or if you get attacked by a spinner, that's okay as well because the material will just let you eat into it without putting too much strain on the other joints. With that being said though, although it will allow spinners to eat into it since it's so dense, it will take some effort for them to get all the way through. HDPE is actually the primary material I'm using to build my 3 pound robot Rytron and my 1 pound robot Talon. But you don't know about that yet. Oh, and something I forgot to mention, if you don't have time to order the plastic online, you can just head down to your local grocery store because HDPE is what most cutting boards are made out of these days. 
Now a downside of this plastic is unlike Alexan, there really is not a good glue or solvent to glue it together. I mean there is glue that could do it, but it just won't hold it very well, especially not for battle. But that's okay because since it's typically pretty thick, you can screw it together, which is really your best bet. I've also experimented with a couple different kinds of joints to see which ones hold best. I've tried box joints, corner biscuit joints, butt joints, and a couple other ones. And after experimenting with them, I've come to believe that as long as you properly fasten them with screws, they all perform about the same. Granted, once you start building larger bots, that may change, but for insect weights, butt joints seem to be the way to go. They're quick, easy, and hold extremely well, especially after you bolt the top and bottom on them. Oh, that was backwards. That's actually what I did for Rytron. We just have butt joints, then the top and bottom, and it all works together to be very solid. Now, I don't feel it's fair to talk about HDPE without talking about UHMW. UHMW is very similar to HDPE, except it's stronger, but also more expensive. I'm not going to go into too much detail about UHMW because I have not personally worked with it a whole lot, but I've definitely heard wonderful things about it. However, for me, HDPE seems to be working just fine for the time being. Next up, we have metals, primarily aluminium, or for you British people, aluminum, steel, and titanium. As you can see, I am pretty much out of all of these, especially titanium, since this is actually just a block of foam. Now that I think about it, I actually have seen some people use foam for battle bots. Now, aluminum can be a fantastic choice for frames, even in the insect weight classes, because it's very light and exceedingly strong. However, it would probably be best if you knew a little bit about machining in order to properly use it. But it is probably one of the more expensive materials on the list so far. Next up we have steel and titanium. Now you could use these as a frame by either bending them or bolting them together, but in insect weight classes they're typically used as wedges. No matter what your bot is made out of, it's typically a good idea to have some kind of harder metal wedge at the business end of it to take the front of the abuse. Kind of like what Rytron's got. Now titanium is lighter and stronger than steel, and as a result it's also more expensive. But when building insect weight robots, you typically aren't going to need that much of it, so it's still a manageable price. I typically go with steel over titanium, but that is simply because I ain't got no dollars. It is also important to note that regardless of what material you use, you don't necessarily have to work with it yourself. There are companies out there that will cut out and machine these parts for you. All you have to do is design the actual robot on a software like CAD and then send them the file. It is typically more expensive than doing it yourself, but also more precise. Or if you don't have any tools, maybe it would be cheaper to go that route. There's also 3D printing, which has become pretty popular in recent years for 150 gram and one pound box. You could of course use it for larger robots, but it typically doesn't hold up that well because the plastic isn't that strong. However, it does do some really precise work. And really, that's the thing about all these materials. They all have their different strengths and weaknesses. Plus, everything has a different weight, so you're gonna have to juggle that as well to make sure you're not too heavy. Part of the fun of building a bot is finding a way to cover up one material's weakness by using another material's strength. It can definitely be a challenge at times, but also exceedingly fun. And that is actually where I'm going to end today's video. Now again, this was just meant to be a quick overview of the materials and not an in-depth look, but I hope you guys still found it helpful. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys thought of this faster paced rant style video. Do you like it? Would you like me to take it slower in the future? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe. But if you're still not convinced about the wonders of Lexan, the Latin name for it is polyacarbonate, which roughly translates to, oh my goodness, this stuff is so tough, I think I can make bulletproof glass out of it.